Instagram influencers. There are a dozen different videos that can be made about the various grifts, outright scams, predatory, manipulative, or otherwise insane ongoings with people that fall into that group. But today, we're going to focus on a specific one, the degeneracy of Instagram models. In particular, the really attractive ones you see posing next to yachts, in five-star hotels, next to infinity pools in the sky, flaunting expensive jewellery and designer clothes, travelling the globe in style. How did they get all that? I'll tell you. They had to go through some real shit. Unlike everyone else who toils away day by day at the job they most likely hate, for a wage that likely doesn't represent their real value, these models can earn more than the average yearly wage in a single weekend. But what are they doing for that? And why is it that all these models seem to go to the same place? What is it about Dubai that attracts all these young, attractive women? We have a SCD check and Mr. Ali too. After that, we are having unprotected sex and I will let Mr. Ali lick the rumors of my feet. I will also um, fuck uh, his virgin brother who is 13 years old who is 13 years old and Mr. Ali is paying me 50,000 US dollars. This was leaked in 2022. It's a woman agreeing on video as a sort of social contract to the terms of an arrangement. The arrangement is not uncommon at all. In fact, this one is tame compared to what you can find online, which includes videos of those encounters. Me saying what you've just heard is tame should let you know what's going on, can get real crazy. The general consensus is that models like this make most of their money from brand deals. In reality, many of them are using that social media clout as an alternative kind of advertising. They're not advertising products, they are the product. And the buyer is usually a very wealthy man from the Middle East. Dubai is the playground of the ultra wealthy, and what is a good playground without some toys. Where are they going to find them? Enter Instagram. Yeah, I got the watch that matches it. How much is that? This was $450,000 or something. Some, you know, something. All right, guys, welcome to my car collection. The fucked up relationship between society and the fake lives of social media stars is always bad. I don't see many positives to it, but it's almost never worse than this. Social media is seen as a window into only the best of a person's life. This gives them the power to shape it how they see fit. Will they shape it using nuance, showing the bad along with the good? Unlikely, because psychologically you crave acceptance and want others to think highly of you. The result, especially when this window is conveyed only with pictures, is that of a perfect existence, which is completely unattainable. A rainy Wednesday at 4am when you've ate a bad kebab and a glue to the toilet at both ends with food poisoning doesn't go on the gram. But when you're out at a fancy restaurant eating tiny overpriced meals, get that on there. Now, what about when your entire livelihood is tied to this Instagram profile? You can dial everything up to 11. Photoshop, cosmetic surgery, professional photography equipment and personnel to operate them, travel as much as possible, essentially make people buy into the idea that your life is out of this world amazing. Now if you're watching this video you might be somebody that knows all this and thinks that nobody can fall for it. That's incorrect. It actually has a provable wide-scale impact on people that follow these social media stars. Let's look at the male dominated grifts that are in this arena such as the self-help and guru sphere. Hey you, yeah you sat on YouTube, wasting your life watching videos. I used to be just like you, but now look at me. I'm in my Bugatti, I've got 15 girlfriends, and I've got more millions in my bank account than you've got on your World of Warcraft account. Look at my social media, expensive cars, expensive clothes, expensive watches, expensive women. You can have it all too, just buy my course for $900. It's on sale right now, because of course it is, and it's definitely worth $5,000 usually, but I'm such a nice guy that I'm gonna give it to you for 900. This concept, along with the complex psychology of how you would personally use and engage with social media, turns all this into an incredibly effective tool. Generally, you see your friends on social media, you see their lives, you see your own life, and you think what you're seeing is real, but even your real friends are putting up their best life on there, that's not how they're living day to day. For the gurus, 
for them, it's mostly all fake. The cars are rented, the clothes are rented, the watch is fake, and the women are probably rented as well, at least to start out. Later on, maybe they'll become real. That's if they're successful. But usually, as time passes, the charlatans have been outed, moved on, or ran out of money to fake their lifestyle and went back to the job that they hated before. But as you can see from the rise of people like Andrew Tate and the Manosphere in general, other men see this and they want to emulate it. The followers buy the course and they think that's actually going to be good for their life and they're going to become wealthy just like their idol that sold it to them. The smart ones make their own course and try to become their idol. And you might be thinking, what does this have to do with Instagram models and this video's topic? Well, for them, it's even worse. Ouroboros, an ancient symbol depicting a serpent eating its own tail. What do I mean by that? Attractive young women post on Instagram, amass followers, show their privileged, extravagant and seemingly perfect lifestyle to those followers, and then other women, maybe younger than them, see this without knowing exactly how it was procured and following their footsteps. The cycle continues on and on. It's exploitative at every single level. And that isn't to say if you're an attractive woman that has a high follower count on Instagram that you are participating in this behavior. Luckily, there are many such safer and more legit ways to make money from a large following. But if you do see one of these models flaunting their Dubai pictures a few times a year, people should probably know what's going on there. The hashtag and nickname Dubai Porter Party was trending not so long ago. And yes, it is exactly what it sounds like. Let's talk about this Dubai Porter Party. It's called Portable Party, like a human party, a human toilet. Essentially, girls were being contacted by wealthy men to be flown out to the Middle East, mostly Dubai in particular, to engage in a ton of different insane and disgusting acts. Now, while I'm usually one to say whatever two consenting adults do behind closed doors is their business, Obviously, when you factor in all the elements I've just outlined in this video, things do need to be talked about. Especially when you consider the United Arab Emirates have pretty strict laws when it comes to prostitution, which makes these such arrangements illegal. But considering the wealth and power of those involved, actually incredibly dangerous to engage in on the woman's behalf and not on the man's. These people are above the law, essentially, and you're being flown into a country to do illegal things where if you do something wrong or you don't provide the services which you've been contracted for or things get out of hand, you are the one that has no safety. Which is why this all came to a head. There was a leak of a video of a Dubai porta potty happening. The woman in the video unfortunately took her own life after it was posted online, while still in Dubai, jumping from the seventh story of her hotel. There are, of course, numerous other stories of women just straight going missing. Nobody knows if they're alive or if they've been tricked there under false pretenses and have been forced into the sex industry full time, just unable to leave. The most common thing that happens, though, is pay for play. The play here being things that you would only see on some very specific and horrific websites, most of which I can't even say out loud for risk of this video being hidden under the darkest corner of the algorithm, never to see the light of day. But I'm talking about animals doing stuff to you, you doing stuff to animals, animals going in you, large groups of men like 10 to 20 doing stuff to you, making you eat the poo poo. It's not uncommon for that video you saw at the intro to be a factor either. I mean, you're already there performing illegal activities for money anyway. So what's one more illegal activity to go along with it, especially when they're going to give you 50 grand for said activity. And anyway, who doesn't love dogs and camels? This, of course, is a sliding scale. The more extreme the encounter, the more money involved. This can get up to six figures for a couple days of heinous acts, though it's considerably more common to be five to ten grand with business class tickets, a fancy hotel stay, and a shopping trip with a rich man's credit card for a weekend of normal escorting activities. And of course, cryptocurrency plays a factor here, because if you can find an industry of crime, you'll also find cryptocurrency involved somewhere along the way. If you are one of these girls that's lucky enough, apparently, to land yourself one of these real big whales, chances are they're going to fly you in and out on a private jet. So you'll be able to carry your new Louis Vuitton bag with 50 grand in cash in it when you leave. But if you're flying commercial, that's not going to work. You're going to be stopped and have your money confiscated. Luckily for you, the magic internet money is here to save the day. Simply accept the money in whatever cryptocurrency they want to use, and then you can fly business class back to your country, take a 48 hour long shower, book a therapist, get yourself to a clinic for a checkup, and get back to posting on Instagram with all your nice new luxury goods that were gifted to you in between whatever soul destroying thing you had to do for it. 
I'm a firm believer that social media has given us a great number of things, some of them amazing. The interconnected nature of being able to have a conversation with seemingly an infinite number of people from different walks of life, cultures, backgrounds and experiences, staying connected during difficult times, the ability to learn at an unprecedented rate with easy accessibility, freedom of information. It's even given some of us, like me, a job, but it has also given us clout culture, flexing a fake lifestyle, the mental health epidemic that's plaguing particularly younger people who see everyone living amazing lives and contrast it to their own mediocre or shit one. You only have to look at people like Kim Kardashian or any other number of big influencer, big social media star to see that people, particularly young women, look up to these individuals. Some of the richest and biggest, most searched people on the planet are people that just have large Instagram followings. And when people follow, inevitably, many people are going to want to emulate. Because it's obvious, right? You're living a mediocre or poor life, and these people are showing you the pinnacle of existence, the literal dream. They're not telling you all the bad things, they're not showing you any of the bad things. And this really does get into people's head, it's literal brain rot. And it's incredibly common. And this is the dark truth behind what some of these people are going to be emulating. What you see on social media is not always real. In fact, it's almost always fake in some way. These are not people you want to emulate. What you see isn't real. And what is real is often a disgusting, harrowing experience that will linger on long after their fame, beauty and opportunity have vanished.